we don't have as much decomposition happening on the outside of the tree as opposed to the inside. Charred logs, standing dead tree trunks, and decaying branches mark the site of the Hochtefer fire that burned hot near Flagstaff. Northern Arizona University forest ecologists Mike Stoddard and Matthew Herto are looking for a sign, any sign of ponderosa pine seedlings some 15 years after the 16,000 acre fire. We're concerned about ponderosa pine not regenerating after these wildfire events. But it's the invisible damage that scientists are learning more about. We have a site here that is not taking up carbon dioxide and storing it at all right now. We all know trees breathe in carbon dioxide, but how long they can hold it affects the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This is something that's called an eddy covariance system. As air flows through the fingers of this claw-like device, NAU tree physiologist Tom Kolb can measure the carbon dioxide that's moving between the air and the land. The fire has had a long-term legacy effect on the capacity of the site to take in carbon dioxide and store carbon dioxide. Prior to the fire, this was a dense forest that would take in somewhere between 100 and 200 grams of carbon per square meter of land per year. After the fire, now it's actually releasing CO2 to the atmosphere. Remains of intense fires dot the southwest. This is the site of the Cerro Grande fire that burned 48,000 acres near Santa Fe, New Mexico 11 years ago. Greenhouse gases were emitted during the fire and live trees that used to store carbon in the wood are now dead trees releasing carbon dioxide years later. If we reduce the amount of trees per acre, and ret return fire as a process to the system to manage the surface fuels, the carbon that's left in the forest in the live trees is much more stable. Carbon Flex research shows trees in this thin forest are inhaling carbon dioxide and less likely to burn up in a high severity fire, which has scientists breathing a little easier. For Inside NAU, I'm Bonnie Stevens with the Ecological Restoration Institute.